So here we have a lake, and those lake sediments are very hard. They're very compact. Um, and it's a nightmare, basically, to ex excavate them. Uh, we started out with things like pickaxes, and this sometimes takes days in one excavation trench to break through the marls, these lake beds. Uh, and the, S the, the SGS, the folks, the geologists said, what are you doing with these pickaxes? So they're bringing out things like jackhammers just a few days ago. <laughs> and they were much more rapid in excavating these trenches. So that was really brilliant. That was a brilliant idea. Uh, this site um, has been dated uh, previously to about 325,000 years ago. Our latest information suggests probably about 350 to 400,000 years ago. So, so this information is a little bit old, but thereabouts, about 350,000 years ago. Uh, we have this lake, uh, and then the question is, what else do we have? So once you break through those very compact marls, and this is really tough work, uh, it's wonderful you down onto a deposit where fossils start to emerge. You break through the marls and you get immediately this deposit with fossils. And the fossils, almost every single one is like a museum specimen. They're very well preserved. So the lake buried these fossils very rapidly. Uh, and so they're very well preserved. So here's like a mandible of a creature there. Um, there's a Part of the pelvis, and so we were able to excavate these things. And this is brand new information. There's never been information uh, on the animals of Arabia at this period of time, and it's associated with a human period. Um, some of the fonts are off. I work on a Mac, and maybe it's throwing some things off, but you can read it. Um, one of the most dramatic finds we had last season was finding a tusk. Imagine in the middle of the food desert, you find this big, beautiful tusk. Um, and this is an extinct elephant called Paleoloxodon. And we think this is an African dispersal. So about 350,000 years ago, the elephants are moving out of Africa into Arabia. Um, and they're going extinct, however. Um, in our, just a few days ago, we, um, we excavated this molar. And molars are really diagnostic, so this is great. Um, so folks here from uh, the Natural History Museum are helping us identify the species and such. Um, and so this immediately gives you though information, a feel for what it was like. Mm -hmm. Elephants like this, um, from, from the ground surface to the shoulder, these creatures are about um, four and a half meters in height. So it's a big, massive creature. Uh, drinking something like 250 liters of water a day and about 150 kilograms of vegetation a day. So it gives you a sense that there's plenty of water, drinkable water, and lots of vegetation for these creatures to be um, uh, living on. And as we're excavating, we're finding more and more elephants. So uh, we think this is almost a particular moment in time, and there are a lot of elephants uh, on that landscape, along that lake edge. We're also finding other creatures, which I, I still find amazing. <laughs> that you know, we have not only carnivores, uh, early horse, ibex, uh, oryx, but we also get amazing creatures. Just, it just amazes me that we get things like turtle uh, and hippos, hippos <laughs> in the middle of the food desert, and fish. Some fish which are about a meter and a half long meter and a half long fish, so how did they get there? Obviously they're swimming up the rivers or getting into those lakes and living there for a while. So we're getting a sense that once the lakes are there, there's an awful lot of dispersal of animals too, and the creatures that live off those animals. So there's really close relationship between the formation of lakes and the expansion of animal communities. But the humans still elude us. Even though we have an incredible archaeological record, based on past research and even our own, we find these stone tools, very commonly you have thousands and thousands of stone tools, hundreds of archaeological sites, but not, there's not one human bone prior to 10,000 years ago in the Arabian Peninsula. And so I think a, you know, it, 
it will happen. It will happen eventually. Uh, and when it happens, it'll be huge news because everyone's interested in you know our species. When do we get out of Africa? And also early forms of humans. And so uh, we're hopeful. Uh, and I think, though, however, almost se separate projects almost have to happen in order to explore and find human fossils. I mean. The Leakies were at it for decades in East Africa before they found human fossils. But once they start finding human fossils, they're finding them <coughs> over and over and over again. Um, but we've hardly begun to work in the Arabian Peninsula. We have a good idea where to try to find some of these things, but we're only scratching at the surface. So I think the future um, will, will, will be good. Um, we know those archaeological sites are there, but we need to find those humans. And so let's talk about those early humans and human populations. And again, what's the relationship between water resources, the fossils, and those archaeological sites? And one thing I want to do is address and start to think about <coughs> how long have modern people that inhabit Arabia, how long have they been there? And um, what can we say? about fluctuations of climate through time <coughs> and what populations, what happened to those populations. So that's something I'll, I'll address in the next few slides. And when we just think about Arabia, you know, we, I, I showed you a slide of, of primates getting out of, out of Africa and moving across Arabia. But, and, and when you look at Arabia, I think it has been a central node uh, unlike those depictions of avoiding Arabia, I think it's been a central node for literally millions of years. Uh, and that's the case for our own uh, migration out of Africa. But also, it's, it's even the case for the modern world. I think Arabia's been a node, and to ignore it is not telling an accurate story about human evolution and the relationships of people through time. Uh, and so you can see that when you look through time, I think we have to be uh, putting Arabia in its proper place. Otherwise, we're telling inaccurate stories about um, culture and culture change as well as um, migrations through time. So we go back to the earliest period of time, um, in a period we call the Lower Paleolithic, or when, when early humans like Homo erectus we're using these implements that we call a Shulian, a Shulian hand axes. We can see that in the literature, again, the argument is that these populations are moving out of Africa uh, and almost avoiding the heart of Arabia. So we have always depictions in the literature of going through the Levant or skirting the coastline as if you're avoiding the deserts of Arabia. And whenever I look at the literature, you always see Arabia as a blank spot on the map. And we're trying to rectify that. So let's start with the early human populations and what uh, have we found. Well, make a long story short, in the last couple of years, we have found many lower Paleolithic sites. In fact, Arabia, Saudi Arabia in particular, has, uh, I would say, hundreds of localities uh, where we need to start putting those dot dots on the map. Uh, we have um, done a survey of some of these, what are called volcanic <coughs> dikes, and we've gone along literally about 150 kilometers of these volcanic dikes. And that's where early humans were making these Acheulean hand axes along these volcanic uh, exposures. And we have found that Archaeological sites of this period are spread along those dikes for 150 kilometers. So our surveys have proven that point. This is the largest distribution, one of the largest distributions of Acheulean sites in the world. And we've hardly published it yet, so we're just starting. Um, and uh, we can see that not only are the early humans following the rivers to penetrate the heart of Arabia, but they're following the dikes in order to manufacture their hand axes. Uh, we've only excavated um, uh, Whalen, um, 
excavated this site back in the 80s, and we've gone back to it. Uh, and we have shown now that that site dates at a minimum to 330,000 years ago. It probably extends much earlier in time, at least 400,000 years ago. We start to get into a dating problem because there are chronometric techniques have to be applied to accurately date the site. But at least 400,000 years ago, probably much earlier. So our excavations are now starting to prove that Homo erectus or closely related ancestors to them, like Homo heidelbergensis, were getting into the heart of Arabia. Not only were they getting there, they were living there very common. Um, another snapshot uh, that I, I can talk about <coughs> are the questions of movement of our own species, Homo sapiens, out of Africa. And uh, one of my arguments, and there is a big debate out there on one side of it, is that I think one of the markers of the movement of modern humans, Homo sapiens, out of Africa, is what we call the Middle, middle Paleolithic technology. And when we map that technology in Africa, where it's associated with Homo sapiens, we find, of course, it's very common. In Arabia, it's also very common, except we don't have the fossils. So we assume our interpretation is that as populations are expanding out of Africa, they're getting into Arabia, and then ultimately into the Indian subcontinent. So let's just look at what we have uh, uncovered. Uh, and one of the most curious things, however, that we have found is that we've dated one of these Middle Paleolithic sites to 211,000 years ago. So again, we don't have fossils, so we don't know who this is, but our species is supposed to have begun in Africa around 200,000 years ago. And so the question is, is this our own species, or is it a closely related ancestor like the Neanderthals? This is a point of contention and debate, but we're starting to find sites that will put Arabia on the map in terms of the debates. <coughs> so we have an early, we have early Middle Paleolithic sites, but lo and behold, we also have Middle Paleolithic sites that date to younger periods of time. We've excavated a number of sites, and we've now proven that these Middle Paleolithic sites are around 100,000 years ago, 75,000 years ago, and 55,000 years ago. And these are human periods. They're all associated with lakes. And we get that Middle Paleolithic technology again. Um, so there are expansions of populations, whoever they are, uh, and they're moving all across Arabia. So these are the first dated stratified sites of Saudi Arabia that were uncovered in, associate, in association with these lakes, which have uh, drinkable water. Um, 55,000 years ago was our youngest Middle Paleolithic site, and then we don't have anything so far. Uh, with this big gap, and we have just uh, reported, we've just published on a site, the very first, what we call, epipaleolithic sites uh, of Saudi Arabia, and these are these little microblades, very characteristic microblade technologies, um, and this is the first of its kind for Saudi Arabia, and we dated that to about 11,000 years ago. It has real close similarities to what we find in the Levant, uh, and uh, so our questions are, are populations of very mobile hunter-gatherers moving between the Levant and at least northern Saudi Arabia? Um, or it's, sorry, this slide has really gotten out of whack. Uh, there are some nice pictures, but you can't see them right now. Um, some of the shells that you actually see there are indicating very fresh water conditions. So again, populations of this period of time are following um, those freshwater conditions.